Fru Force once again. This is Captain Fru reporting for duty, and this is another episode of Road Rage. Uh, just for those of you that might be new to the channel, Road Rage is where I put my phone in this hands-free setup here, and and I put it in the mount, and I, I just chat about things that are on my mind, uh, and I like it to be conversational. So please share your views in the comments section as well it that's what the whole point is is uh, getting a good conversation going here and today i, I want to talk about uh, a couple topics in general uh, before i do though if you like these videos please be sure to help me out hit like subscribe hit that notifications bell um also just so you know i do not run ads on my channel i don't like how youtube treats content creators uh, I, I think they're very selective and, and do some harsh things. So I am not generating any ad revenue. I am completely fan funded. Uh, one way you can help is go to the Patreon link down below. And you can contribute as much or as little as you want. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be a member of the Frugal Force. Get some additional benefits as well. Or if you want a one-time thing or you really like the channel, you can. I also have merch. <laughs> you can go to captainfrugal.redbubble.com. That'll be in the info bar down below. And that helps the channel as well. Currently, I'm saving, uh, you know, the working, uh, saving my money for my comic book as well as I really am trying to get a new computer so I can do more interviews with independent artists and show them in a better way. My computer just can't do what I want to do, and I want to be using Streamlabs OBS. I'm running dual monitors, so I want to be able to put up more stuff from the content creators on one screen and be constantly showing that while doing the discussion. And unfortunately, my computer just can't handle it all. <laughs> all right, so back into the topic. If you haven't listened, uh, I did a live stream just last night with Peter Samedi, and it got me thinking. You know, and, and there's a lot of things this, this brings up. A lot of people, I've been getting discussions online. Uh, sales are down for the big two, as well as image and things like that. You don't want to admit it, uh, you know, that's shame on you. Uh, I, I got a lot of these people, well, you don't understand, you don't get all the numbers. Uh, you know, and all that about digital sales and all this. Well, first of all, digital sales aren't that great. As we discussed, I have I have some inside information on digital sales. I don't have the hard, all the numbers and things like that. So bear that in mind. But digital sales, and I'm gonna be very rough, rough estimate here would say is 10% of the, tr the paper, you know, the floppy sales. Okay, so you have to consider that. So here's another thing, though, that ar why that argument doesn't hold water. Well, you know, you don't count the digital sales on this. Okay, but what they don't count, too, is what the real sales are. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, Marvel and stuff don't care because they sold it to the comic shops, but not all those comics sell. You have to look at the sell-through. How many of those are actually leaving the shelf? How many are staying? If, if you think about it, it comes out as a wash. Actually, probably even worse in the favor of the comic books because less don't sell than what they, they make up for in digital. So sales are down, and, and this is the profound thing about it. You look at all of them, oh, it's an industry, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. It has impact, absolutely. Competition has impact with the value for the dollar. How is it that Marvel, DC, Image, IDW, all these companies are decreasing in sales the last couple of years, but a company like Alterna has had their sales increase? And there is another, that whole conundrum there. And that, we have to explore why that is. The product that's being delivered, sorry, that's part of the road rage you hear it, tell me where to go. Um, it, you know, part of these videos, oh, Road Rage, get, get all that noise. Well, anyway, I digress. The sales, why is Alterna growing? Now, that's something we have to explore and think about. And part of it, I, I think, is quality of product and trust and loyalty and brand perception. For one, you, you look at these people right now. They're out there. They're attacking Peter Samedi of, of left and right. And we don't even see nearly all the attacks that he's getting. Um, but yet he still constantly composes himself. I gotta get moving a little faster. There we go. He constantly composes himself as a professional, and that's key right there. That is a big point. He's constantly presenting himself as a professional. You don't see Peter Semedi going out and attacking people, sending butthole pics, and things like that. No. Peter Samedi is the constant professional. I don't think he's got that meanness in his heart. I don't think he could if he wanted to, <laughs> to be honest. He's a very nice, kind, and smart man. And he knows his business. And that's the thing. He treats it as a business. Where a lot of these writers and artists and things that are constantly, you know, doing these, setting these nasty things and all, they don't know business. 
in a lot of their supporters that sit there and bang on, they don't know how business works. I don't care if it's only 10%, 3%, 5% of your market. You treat all of your market with respect. You treat them all good. There could be buyers, they could be potential buyers. And that's a lot of these, these nut jobs, if you will, like Mark Wade and stuff, they don't think about. The lifetime value of a customer. You might you think, okay, well, it's only going to cost me an issue. Yeah, but what about lifetime? How many comics would they have bought in a lifetime? You know, and that does matter. And I'm not saying, oh, well, you don't count if you don't have a lot of comics. No, I'm not saying that. The potential customer matters too. And and there's a disconnect. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of the, the, the new generations that are going to be buying these books go online. They go on social media. They go, mm, I'm interested in this comic. So they check out the artist. They check out the writer. And they see this toxic behavior. Or they see them belittling things that they believe in. You know? Or you know, or political thoughts, and they can only, they'll only take so much, and they're not going to keep buying from you after you just pretty much called them an idiot or or even worse things, whatever ism they can throw at you. And, and that's the thing, you don't see a professional like Peter Smay do that. He's, in my, you know, I, it came to me during the live stream. He seems to me like the next Stan Lee. You didn't see that garbage from Stan Lee. Stan Lee knew how to use PR effectively. You know, I don't think he had it in him either to, you know, to have that kind of thing like Wade and these nutballs do, this Mark Lombardi guy. What a jerk. You know, and, and so people see that and they resonate with that. And, and so they they do that. And then here's another thing. They have faith in the industry. Now, Peter somebody said he, had, he gets tons and tons of submissions. And this guy works 90 hour weeks, mind you. So he, he can't accept everything. It doesn't always fit the brand. And I understand the big ones get that too. Don't get me wrong. Okay, there, there's lots of you know push to get into those things. But so here's one of the things is quality of the product. Can you honestly say that you could pick up 10 books from Marvel and the quality is going to be high enough that you feel confident when you buy a Marvel book that, that's going to be good? Think about that. And you're paying $3.99 an issue, sometimes more. You can go to Alterna, pick up 10 issues for $1.50, maybe $1.99 for some. And you, let's compare out of those 10, how many would you say was worth your money? There's a disconnect with things like Marvel and DC right there. I, I think that most people could pick up that, 10 books out of Marvel, and you're going to get a pretty good amount of stinkers, to be honest with you. And if you did 10 books of Alterna, you're going to have a lot better output. And in the one or two maybe that you didn't care for, you paid a buck fifty maybe for, where there's three ninety nine. So you feel more secure, more safe, more value for your money with Alterna. So you're going to want to come back more. It's that loyalty, brand loyalty. And that's another thing. Marvel has lost, and DC is on that path too, losing brand loyalty. When you keep picking up books, a large amount of books, and you expect them to be good at $3.99, they better be good. It's a large cost for that amount of entertainment. And you get a stinker, it hurts. It costs you more. On top of that, you can get a fully contained story from Alterna, because usually they're around three, four issue series, you know, for like six bucks. Whereas you can't even get two issues of Marvel for that. And usually to get a fully contained story arc, it's going to cost you 30 something bucks or you have to wait for the trade. There's a lot of problems there with the disconnect of what the consumers want. And Marvel and DC are tending to be on the, and as well as others, failing to perceive, take note of what the consumer wants. They're using a push strategy rather than a pull strategy. Alterna's pulling you in by giving products that you like for a price point you want. Where Marvel's trying to push it on you and, and hope it works. Hey, take this. You will take this and you will like it. If not, don't buy it. I have a news flash. When there's competition in a good, healthy industry, that crap doesn't fly. They only were able to keep it up so long because they're one of the major sellers. Now, unfortunately, there's a connection that has to be there. Uh, once again, people, well, you just want to see them burn. No, I do not. I do not want to see Marvel burn. I don't want to see DC burn. I've grown up with these characters. I've, you know, I've been reading some of these characters for almost 40 years. I love 
a lot of these characters. When I say love, okay, you, you use that term loosely. Not a uh, man loves his child or his wife, but I really have a care for these characters. I want my see my kids read them. My kids' kids read them. Oh, they won't die out. Well, you don't actually. Are you sure about that? When sales get so bad, I got news flash for you. It's business. It doesn't matter how much somebody loves the characters. It's business. If those books stop selling, they will stop making them. And those numbers continue to go worse and worse. And 2019, you know, is this going to be another year of decline? Because, you know what, if that's the case, and this is, now I'm starting to tin hat a little bit here, uh, but it you could call it, it might be the end of Marvel publishing their own books. I think we're already seeing tests with it with IDW. Because here's the thing, remember this is business. If I can license out the books, so there's less risk in instant money. The only risk there is ruining your brand, character's reputation, and things, and people not wanting to read that character anymore. But even then, licensing agreements, companies can have a lot of control over what you can and you cannot do in that agreement. So therefore, they get all the benefits of guaranteed profit, but they have none of the risk that those books don't sell. So the, yeah, it is very potentially possible that companies such as Marvel could say, you know what, we're not gonna even publish anymore. We're gonna lease these contracts out of these characters and have others do it, and that's guaranteed money without the risk. That's one of the great benefits of licensing. So yeah, there is a lot of potential there. So we're seeing drops in the majors, and we're seeing this Peter Samedi and Alterna prosper. And I think that's a great thing. As I said, I wish his company, he's a, a great guy, and it's unfair the crap that he's putting up with, but that's life. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons, by the way, they're going so hard after him, is because he's successful. And they're not. I mean, you look at these people, uh, they're, they're not making much money, I tell you. And, and they see somebody like Peter Semenya, this is full-time work, right? He is working hard, 90 some hour a week. And, and, and they're probably mad. You know, because they're SJW garbage books. They're trying to push an agenda rather than telling a story, and they wonder why people aren't buying them. Uh, I haven't read every Alterna book. I'm not going to lie and say I have. I have almost all of them. Um, and I'm reading through, and I'm going to continue reviewing more of them. So you're going to see continue to see more of that. But I challenge you, if you're looking for something to read, at least give it a check. Check out the site of Alterna. Go to your comic shop. See what they have on there. And see, there's books for almost anybody, I think, out there. They really are. There's a, quite a diverse set of books. Kids, young adults, adults, sci-fi, you know, horror-ish kind of things, fun. It's just, just all around there. Why not give them a try for that price point? That That's what I did. I'm not trying. I'm not paid to show for alternative anyway whatsoever. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, there's alternatives out there. And that's one of the great things about competition. And Marvel, DC, Image, IDW, they'll take notice. Trust me, companies watch that. When other companies start are going up and your company's consistently losing, you eventually start looking at why. And I see Alterna as more of a guerrilla warfare company. You're not going to see probably Alterna quadruple in business in a month or two or three or even a year. It's a slow and steady build. And so what happens is eventually, they, the big companies don't notice it much, and eventually they go, what the heck is going on? And they really start to take notice, and they go, well, how did this company get so big? How did this get so much of the market share? And that's when they start having to realize, oh, we've screwed up, and they have to do some more self-correction. So what, I, I'd like to see that happen, because I want to see these companies stay. I, I want a healthy industry with competition, with lots of selection, and I think you do too. I mean, some of you want to see it burn, I guess, but that's not me. But, you know, you be you. <laughs> so, so keep that in mind. All right, I know I've rambled on for a long time on this video, haven't I? But I just, I wanted to get those things off my chest. Those are some of my afterthoughts from my interview with Peter Samedi. Uh, you know, I talked to him on and off from being live, and I he tell you, he's just as genuine and a nice person, <laughs> you know, when he's not live. And I really appreciate that. It's nice to see see that. And he's, he's a true businessman and a smart man, and he has passion for it. And you have to have passion for something when you start a business and you're working 90-something hour a week. So that passion isn't there. You're going to see it. And I think that's part of the thing. We don't see that passion with Marvel and DC anymore. We see these people that are more passionate about other things. It's definitely not their work. 
All right, so I rambled. I took a lot of shots <laughs> at people there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, like and subscribe if you did. And once again, please check out you know some alternatives if you're not happy with what you're seeing. There is some still great stuff out there for you. And until next time, keep it frugal.